became a Catholic, I was Hindu. And in Hindu, I belonged to a caste called Brahmin. And Brahmin is Hindu priestly caste. And uh, we had 30, 300,000 gods or 300,000 uh, idols or whatever you would uh, choose to put there. Generations after generations, there was not one mixed marriage, not one Christian or not one Muslim in my family. So uh, they, I was brought up very protectively, very, very protective, uh, very, very strict Brahmin background. And um, I was taught all the hymns. I was taught about the Vedas. I would know, I was very, very spiritual from my very young age. To that extent, my mom and dad were very scared that I might become a sannyasi in the sense a Hindu monk. And at the age of 13, I became an actress because I was a classical dancer. And people would, uh, would uh, see my photographs and they said, oh, this girl has got a different eye. Because not many people have light eyes in uh, South India. I'm from South India. So they would say, oh, she looks like this famous actress and that famous actress and why can't she act? And I was like, uh, acting, I don't know. And then I told myself and my parents, I will try one movie. If I like it, then I will continue. And that eventually became 100 movies over the span of 20 years. And I just continued and continued in uh, five different languages. I was gung-ho about Hinduism, being a Brahmin, and I think I would be the only actress in the Indian cinema history who would travel with her prayer books. So morning I will have my, finish my makeup, we call it call sheet. So I will have my prayer books and uh, every day half an hour to one hour of prayer time in between my shots and uh, every day morning I would start my day with prayer. There was no downtime at all for me until I got married and uh, we were briefly there in Washington, D.C. And I think God wanted to have a little reality check there. I think in his mercy, he knew I was a very devout spiritual person. And um, he knew that I mistook something else or someone else to be the real God or the real parent, I would call. And I think in his mercy, he wanted to show his face to me. And uh, I had a lot of pain and all these things. And in my suffering, I started searching for true God. I started searching for true God because I did not understand the reason for my suffering or the cause for my suffering. And I thought only bad people would suffer or bad karma. Karma is your actions, basically. And in Hinduism, we believe every soul has a cycle of seven births. And so um, I thought I, I would have done something in my last birth uh, because I absolutely did not do anything in this birth. I was devout as much as possible, uh, no boyfriends and no hanky-pankies and all those things. And I was trying to be as good as possible and everything. So I did not understand the reason for my suffering. Then I understood, okay, the accumulated sins of the previous births or, or your generational sins. So I want, then I started finding out how can I get rid of this? And I knew every sickness, every problem in your life is because of your actions. And I wanted to know, and that is when I found out. I read about Buddhism, I read uh, Quran, I read about Sikhism, I read most of the uh, books in my Hindu religion. And uh, there was nothing mentioned about forgiving, renewal regenerating a soul or a person's life. And I was at absolute shock and denial. Oh my God, this couldn't be happening. Then millions of Hindus or the other religion people who have cancer, who have AIDS or who have something else are just uh, running behind stars and their karma trying to figure out and running behind all these uh, magicians and all these people. Hardly they realize their focus is shifted towards the healing and not the healer. They don't have the healer. Without the healer, there is no healing. He's the answer for everybody's questions then. 
and um, I was searching and I would pray every day to this nameless, faceless God or goddess I didn't know at that time. And I would just ask, I have every right to ask that you should show your face to me because I am your creature. I know there should be a magnificent creator. All this beauty cannot be without a God. So as I was praying, you know, I had a maid working in my home and she was a Christian, a Protestant Christian. And I knew Bible is a book of stories mm -hmm. from the other side, of course, you know, it's not stories, but uh, uh, so I borrowed a Bible. I just read a little about Adam and Eve uh, and I was a voracious reader. And for me, if I need to take a nap, if I need to just relax, I need to have a book. And I started reading and I fell asleep and I saw a dream where I was surrounded by rising waters. And I thought, oh my God, this is my karma. This is my sin. This is how people die all of a sudden. People's life gets changed all of a sudden. This is karma. So I'm going to die. And if anybody can save me from this, I would agree and accept him or her as true God. And diagonally opposite to me, I saw this light as a man and man as a light. I don't know how to say. And this beautiful, beautiful human form, but divine. I just looked at him. I know there was mercy. I know there was love. I know I was going to be freed because the beautiful smile in his face gave me so much of assurance. And all these things happen in split second. And he pointed towards me. Till then, I was just fixed, you know, completely, um, I would say, uh, fixed on him. I didn't notice anything. I forgot my situation, everything, just looking at him. And he just pointed me. And when he turned, my gaze shifted to another man whom I came to know later when I started reading the Bible as a devout Christian, that he was Noah. The descriptions just fitted him. And this very different looking boat, because it was just floating in water, I could say it was boat. And from what was written, the measurements and all those things, that also fitted the description. And I knew the Lord was talking to Noah that, you know, you please take her also in this boat or something like that. And I knew that he is going to save me. And that floating thing was none other than Mother Mary in my life. I started saying the rosary because it was a gift from one of the Christians. Because I was actively searching, trying to find out whether this is real God or am I going to be cheated again. And uh, so as I was going through the journey, I went to various churches and one Catholic friend of mine gave me uh, this true Bible, which is a Catholic Bible, and gave me this weapon called rosary. And I haven't stopped wearing it since then in my neck. It, it is always there in my neck, my biggest treasure in life. I started saying the rosary and I started asking Mother Mary to tell me about her son. And I ended up in the Catholic Church. It started from a verse. So I was attending a church called CSI. I have gone there for four Sundays. And every Sunday, the Lord spoke to me through one verse. And my life was changed for good, transformed. In four Sundays, the Lord had me. The four Sundays were so profound. And one verse regarding forgiveness. The Son of Man can forgive the sins on earth. And since I got the interpretation as I was listening as karma, that was my search. That was my search for every soul. How will we attain salvation? Mukti in Sanskrit. How will we attain Mukti? I knew my home was not on earth, it was in heaven. But how do I reach there? Not in the false road, not in a dead end. I needed a way directly from where I am towards heaven. And this since, you know, it, it rang a bell. It rang a bell. And I went back and I asked this uh, friend of mine who took me to this church. I asked her, so how will I know this is what Jesus really spoke? And it is not your priest speaking there. And she said, no, it is there in the Bible. You can go home and check. And they gave me their Bible. And I went home and I checked. 
I knew I was in the right place. No other God in the walk of the earth, in any religion has ever said, I will forgive your sins. I will wash you clean. I will make you white as snow. I will separate your sins as it is from east to west. Nobody has said this. I knew then I am in the right place. I know some Protestant Christians, because I was an actress, people knew I became a Christian. They would come and tell me, why Catholic? Why did you go to Catholicism? It is the same. And I would say, no, don't forget you are talking to a 100% ex-idolator. Don't come and tell me we are doing the same thing in the Catholic Church. In the Catholic Church, nothing is based on the um, crucifix as in crucifix. It is your devotion, it is your heart and thoughts which is directed towards the suffering of Christ whenever you look at the crucifix. But if it is Hinduism, we put a sari to the idol, we bathe the idol in milk. And all the time I remember asking my mom, this milk could be given to some poor child. Why is this milk being wasted? Milk, fruits and all the beauty products, everything we use it on the idol. So it is completely different. And in Hinduism, you need to be clean to, attend, to attain salvation. But Christianity, Catholicism makes you clean to attain salvation. He transforms you. He makes you what he really intended for you to be. I was worshipping just the idols. Nothing was there, maybe some spirits, maybe not. But here we are worshipping the living God. And he speaks to you non-stop, but you need to be ready to listen. And it is amazing once he starts speaking. His word has got power, life, and truth in it. Just if you could just sit with him and listen to him, the transformation starts taking place. The, the Eucharist summons what God is. That God does not have any ego. God does not have any pride which is going to separate us from him. He is always ready to come to you as a loving father, bride, a bridegroom, brother, and a friend. He's always ready. Are we ready to receive him? So when you stand in the line and when you are ready to walk, you go for your confession, you want to have this clean place for your Lord to come in, it really, really summons what God wants you to do and what you have to do to receive God. You need to take that first step so God will take 10 steps. And uh, Eucharist is, is a perfect example of how much God loves you and me today. He wants to come into you. He wants to come with me. He wants to be one with me. He never wants to leave me alone. And that again confirms in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. As we enter